Hi, I'm Alex Paulton. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Talking Time Pieces, where we uh, talk about time pieces. Today, let's take a look at the Universal Genève. This is the Universal Genève Senna chronograph. Um, frankly, one of Universal Genève's last chances to uh, stay viable in the watch industry and uh, a regrettable uh, victim of the quartz wars. Uh, some people call it the quartz crisis, but I mean, it was a marketplace battle. Uh, businesses were destroyed, uh, brands were lost, uh, messy on all accounts. In the uh, decade before, um, Hayek uh, created the Swatch Group and helped uh, resurrect, along with Audemars Piguet and the Royal Oak, helped resurrect the uh, watch industry. Um, about two-thirds of the industry uh, disappeared, just vanished into th the, th the thin air of uh, business obscurity. Uh, Universal Genève uh, was once a very highly respected uh, watch manufacturer, uh, most notably known for the pole router, which was a uh, micro rotor movement, um, especially made anti-magnetic, uh, which, is, which is in the term because it was for pilots flying over the North Pole and had to worry about the uh, variable magnetic fields of you know, flying over the magnetic uh, North Pole or near the uh, North Pole. And of course, being very high up, you catch a lot of the uh, radiation from the Aurora and such. So um, having a good uh, anti-magnetic, reliable watch uh, was uh, highly desirable. And uh, Gerald Genta did the design. So the Universal Genève pole router is desirable to this day. And frankly, if I didn't have um, this uh, Bulova Ambassador micro rotor, I would be very hot still for a pole router, but most pole routers are relatively small and I've got pretty big hands. So uh, I'm actually pleased to get uh, the Senna Chrono. Um, it's an excellent beater chrono because it's rugged steel, this carbon filled plastic, whatever they wanted to call it so that they could claim it was the first carbon watch. Um, but it's got screw down pushers and crowns. We'll go over it when we do the zoom in. Uh, so it's a perfect, uh, I would call it a beater chrono because you can pick one up used for about a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks, uh, which is not bad for a Valjoux 7750 based Swiss made, even though at this time it was owned by an Asian company, uh, chronograph, which I wouldn't knock the ownership. I mean, look at Bulova's managed to do well under uh, Asian ownership as well. I mean, there are brands who manage to survive being picked up by other owners, and there are some brands that uh, do not. Unfortunately, it looks like Universal Genève uh, will stay longly, long and uh, lamented, long gone and lamented, uh, because um, there's too much good competition out there. One of the things about the uh, pole route, I mean, the um, Senna Chrono, is the fact that it has a value 7750, which makes it a great collector's watch because it's a rugged, screw down pusher, waterproof, uh, value 7750 based chrono from a respected company, as I said. But it's an after, I mean, it's a third party movement in a watch during a time when in order to survive in the marketplace, you needed to have an in-house movement or at least a highly decorated third party movement or some other innovation like an add on module or you did something to it to demonstrate some creativity. Um, what this watch demonstrates is solid watchmaking, uh, which unfortunately was not enough to save Universal Genève. So let's take a closer look at this beautiful watch because as I said, um, it's not the watch's fault that it couldn't save the company. If Universal Genève was around today uh, and released this watch, it would be of course more modern, but it would also be uh, more highly received and uh, this would probably cost more as a collectible. But uh, as I said, Universal Genève didn't make the cut. And um, well, there are still other good companies out there with some excellent products to uh, talk about. But let's flip the camera and take a look at the Universal Genève Senna Chrono. So here we have the uh, Universal Genève Senna chronograph. A very nice piece, but unfortunately not nice enough to uh, save the company. This came out 
in the 90s, mid-90s, and it was the uh, last hurrah, uh, or among the last hurrahs, of Universal Genev. Um, I believe they came out with some other models in the 90s, but this is the only one that I know of that has any uh, legs to it as far as collectability and, um, well, also memorability, as it were. Uh, one of its claims to fame was that it had, uh, it was one of these uh, the claiming carbon construction. Um, it's a carbon-filled plastic, almost certainly, but um, you're not really getting a lot of benefit out of it. It might uh, give you some weight benefit, but uh, the case is uh, solid steel. It's still pretty uh, heavy. But uh, one of the nice things about this watch, as I had said earlier, is it's a Value 7750 inside with a day-date function. So it's um, a very nice movement, a rugged, reliable, good movement in a good presentation from a company that uh, yeah, should have survived the uh, quartz wars. It has uh, screw-down pushers, it has a screw-down crown, all trimmed with the uh, carbon plastic. It uh, has very good action. It's well. It has a value 7750 action. The the brake isn't as clean and crisp as with a column wheel, but it does the job. Um, I like the fact that it has screw down pushers and crown because for a uh, value 7750 based sports watch with uh, waterproof uh, rating and screw down crown and pusher. Um, this is a nice watch, has a nice face. It's got a cross hatching in it, a little bit reminiscent of a guilloche pattern. Um, there have been a lot of criticisms about the way they have the um, print because it's very, very, very small. But I kind of like it because the print doesn't dominate the face then. Um, it could have been a, a little bit better designed uh, but all in all, it's a nice presentation. But then again, we come up with the word nice. I guess I'm damning it with faint praise. Uh, it is uh, my go-to beater chronograph. If I need to take a, a chrono somewhere and I'm not sure what kind of environment I'm going to encounter, I do take this. Um, it's values between 1,000 and 1,500. So it's uh, not a cheap beater, uh, but it's the kind uh, you would take to a party and in case you might fall into a pool or get pushed into a pool or jump into a pool or whatever. Um, has a Senna logo on the back. Uh, for those of you who don't know Formula One, uh, Ar Ariton, and yet, I can't pronounce his first name, but uh, Senna was a great famous Formula One driver and uh, supposedly the design was made in conjunction with him. As you see, there is some other uh, text about uh, the construction and waterproofness and the like. Uh, the bracelet, as I said, has got this carbon plastic, uh, which does reduce the weight. The bracelet's not very heavy. And the bracelet's actually pretty supple. Nice uh, bracelet in general. The clasp is very typical of the time. It's pressed metal. Uh, it does have a secure lock. Um, not the nicest clasp, uh, but again, it does the job. It's uh, very utilitarian. Uh, it's a functional piece. It's got some micro adjustment. So you can uh, make it fit well. Uh, so in all in all, it's a, a very nice uh, watch. Now, let's take a quick look-see at the uh, dimensions. We're looking at a case size. Oops, again, I got to turn this thing on. Um, we're looking at a case size of uh, four, it's a 42 millimeter case. So it looks like uh, 41 and a half, 40, like I'm, it's hard to get between the case and around the pushers. So I, uh, I would say it's about a 42 uh, watch. Um, it's an integrated bracelet. So the uh, lug width doesn't matter. Um, 
It's got a thickness of uh, almost exactly 15, so it's a nice thickness for a sports chrono. And as I said, it does have a, a good presentation. It's nicely loomed. Um, although at its age, the loom fades uh, pretty quickly. And uh, like I said, screw down pusher, screw down crown, waterproof, integrated bracelet, nice design. Um, almost a great watch. Almost a great watch. Unfortunately, uh, the fact that it was almost a great watch and the fact that it does not have an in-house movement is uh, why it did not make a big enough impression and did not uh, save the company. Um, in fact, some say uh, it's a sleeper because it's such an ugly watch in some people's eyes. But I think it's um, just a very uh, classic watch for its time and represents the design philosophies of the 90s and the efforts that companies went through to stay relevant, to stay financially viable, and still manufacture uh, pieces during a very tumultuous time in the industry. So uh, let's flip the camera back around and uh, close out the episode. So that was the uh, Universal Geneve Senna Chrono. A fantastic watch for the price point, especially now in the uh, aftermarket. Uh, waterproof, good looking, rugged, and uh, like I said, uh, one of the last good watches from a great company. Thanks for taking the time to be with me today. Have a great day. Stop!